Uber and the Uber killer. Better explained. Let's go. Welcome back to Razor Frequency. And uh, I decided to do this video because um, the other video that I did of called Uber and the Uber killer, I didn't really explain myself properly. I didn't give enough details about my idea, about the taxi coin thing, decentralized Uber basically. So I'm making this video so I can give you more detail. All right, so this idea, uh, the taxi coin thing, you know what? I'm going to call it ride coin because I did Google taxi coin and there is a taxicoin.com. I went there. Uh, it appears just to be a regular, I don't know, local taxi service somewhere. They just happen to make a web page called taxi coin has nothing to do with decentralized, uh, anything. <clears throat> So uh, I'm going to call it, instead of tax coin, I'll call it ride coin. And there's a reason why I call it ride coin. I'll tell you at the end. So this idea, you can put this on an existing blockchain system like Ethereum or maybe Scenario if it, when it comes out. Uh, this type of thing seems possible. It's basically contracts, smart contracts kind of thing. But, you know, for this example, just so you understand, uh, I'm, you know, um, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to give the example uh, as its own blockchain. So we'll call it RideCoin, okay, RideCoin blockchain. If there's any programmers or developers out there watching, just stick with me for a while and you'll see how easy it is to create this. So let's get started. Okay, so in this blockchain, like I said, we'll call it RideCoin. And just like Bitcoin blockchain or other blockchains, there are miners, there are nodes involved, there are wallets involved. Uh, in this case, it's like a wallet, but there's two different types of wallets. So I'm not going to call it wallets anymore. I'll call it uh, apps. So there's going to be the driver app for it and there's going to be the customer app for it, the person that wants uh, needs a ride somewhere. So the way it works is the driver would open up his app and he would declare that I am available. And when he says that I'm available, what the app does is it sends information to the nodes, the driver ID, which is signed digitally, of course. You know, there could be, these are all like uh, examples or possibilities. You could have the price there, how much he charges. You could have the car description there. Uh, you could have his, well, you got to have his rating. This is fundamental. You got to have his rating system and maybe his experience, how long this, you know, the driver's been doing it. And it could even be, I mean, like I said, it's really up to uh, the developer or programmer who's going to produce this, you know, inspection ID, meaning that, you know, like ta I think taxis, like regular taxis, they go to some kind of inspection to prove that the taxi is safe. Well, you could, you know, bring your car there if you're giving rides and you could have an ID there too. And, you know, that could be there too. And, and, and once the customer pays, uh, you know, that could be in, that can be built into the, the, the transaction and therefore it could be verified. So that could be, you know, scam resistant. Anyways, that's just an idea. So that's what would be sent to the nodes. Now the nodes know this. They know the driver ID and some more information. Then the customer, he says, I need a ride. So that gets sent to the note too, this information. And that would be probably the customer ID. These are just suggestions. And maybe the customer rating, what the driver would rate the customer. You know, if he gives a big tip, maybe he's going to give a high rating. Or if the guy's an asshole, maybe he'll give a low rating. Whatever. Like I said, these are suggestions. So now the node, the nodes would have this information about the driver and the customer. There's one thing I forgot to put there about the driver app is, is location, the GPS location, and also the customer um, GPS location that would be sent to the nodes too. Um, so then now the nodes have this information. So the driver arrives and he starts a contract, which 
the customer ag agrees to or not. Now, if he agrees to, contract accepted, then that part now, now the, the miners grab this from the nodes and that goes into the blockchain. So in the blockchain now, because nothing was put into the blockchain yet, uh, initially when the driver starts that app, his app, there's going to be information put into the blockchain, his ID, his rating, you know, if it's, if it's his first ride, you know, and stuff like that, that will be in the blockchain, which can be queried. As of then, nothing else gets put into the blockchain. When the contract starts, that gets put into the blockchain. So it gets sent to the miners, the miners, you know, the mine this stuff and gets put into the blockchain. So now the destination is reached uh, and the contract is finished and payment is sent, whether it's ride coin payment or Bitcoin payment or any other type of uh, cryptocurrency, doesn't really matter. That now gets sent to the nodes also, which the miners mine. And that gets put into the blockchain. So in the blockchain, we have contract ID, we have, which contains or is linked to the driver ID and the client ID. And the, the driver ID has information on the driver and the client ID has information on uh, the, the client and those are linked to that contract so anybody could at any time it's an open you know it's an open uh, blockchain so anybody could query that and see all right let's say on this date or this time or this uh, driver um, you know what happened uh, you know how much was charged uh, the rating that was given the time it happened and so forth and the rating also maybe for the, the customer. So, uh, and that gets put in once per contract and that's it. So that's the stuff that goes into the blockchain basically. So it's not like the blockchain is going to be super bloated. It's not like, you know, if you're going to do a, a, a social network similar maybe to Facebook or something, that's completely different. That, that there's going to be a lot of information there in the blockchain, but in this case, uh, there is not. Okay, regarding the GPS position of the taxi and the GPS position of the client, right, where they go and meet, that stuff could be sent to the nodes, right? That doesn't go in the blockchain right away, right? That, goes only, that only goes in the blockchain when the contract gets started and when the contract ends, or it doesn't even have to go into the blockchain, the GPS position of the, the rider and the, the driver. doesn't have to be, or it could be, it doesn't really matter. But as for updating, on your app, you know, that could be sent to the nodes every 10 seconds, every five seconds, every 30 seconds, every minute. It doesn't have to be that precise that, you know, the ride coin driver, okay, he's 300 feet away, he's 200 feet away, like instantaneous. It doesn't have to be. It's just the, the most important part is the initial part where, you know, you broadcast your location. Let's say the person who wants a ride, he broadcasts his location so that the ride coin driver can know where he is and get there. So it could, you know, technically it can only be broadcast once, you know, uh, but maybe for the driver, it could, should be maybe broadcast every 30 seconds, every minute. I mean, these are, these are little details that, that you can get around, I'm sure. All right. Now, hopefully you understand uh, a little bit more of how the system would work. As you could see, if you're a programmer or blockchain programmer uh, or developer, you know, it's, it's, pretty simple. It's, it's not that, it's not a giant leap. Now, what I want to say about Ridecoin is I did Google Ridecoin too. And guess what? In 2013, someone beat me to it. They wanted to do this. They wanted to set up a decentralized Uber type system, you know, ride sharing, decentralized ride sharing service. And they called it Ridecoin and it exists except that I think Initially, the idea was put out and I think they stopped development on that. I don't know if it's permanent or temporary uh, because everything seems to end, start and end in 2013 from what I could see on the internet. I didn't go do a lot of research into it, but uh, and I went through the forums a bit and it seems like they're talking about safety. That's the issue with safety. Now, let me address this. 
the issue with safety. When Uber first started, all right, did you hear in the news c crashes or, you know, a lot of safety issues with Uber in the beginning? Tons and tons and tons. No, there was some. I heard a lot. They got ripped off. They were overcharged, stuff like that. But I didn't hear continuous and lots of information on safety, like the car crashed because the car wasn't safe enough or the driver drives like an idiot and he got into an accident. I didn't hear stuff like that reports when Uber first started because when Uber first started, it was really like underground stuff. It wasn't like too much out in the public or in the news. So they were saying in the forums about the ride coin thing that the reason why uh, they think maybe that the ride coin idea died is because of the safety uh, aspect of it. But I'm here to tell you that just like eBay, the, ride, the drivers of, of Ridecoin, they could have a rating system. So if the guy has a rating of, let's say, a high rating, you know by from his experience, from his reputation, right, that uh, he's safe. I mean, what's the ultimate way of knowing if you're going to be safe or not? It's the reputation. That's the ultimate way. Look at the past. This guy's a good guy. This guy gets good ratings. This guy, you know. So those are my thoughts on the safety factor of it. It is doable. And I guarantee you, just because Ridecoin stopped, started and stopped in 2013, I guarantee you this will happen. This will come into existence. They will come out with some kind of ride sharing, decentralized ride sharing. I guarantee you that. Uh, with Pit Bitcoin being vented, the cat's out of the bag. You know, the genie's out of the bottle, those expressions. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Like I said, could be in six months, a year, six years. It will happen. So this video is just kind of to explain how easy it would be to create that. That's all. Um, you know, and like I said, all those things that I proposed, they're just ideas like, you know, maybe some of my, maybe some of those ideas weren't good. Some of them can be changed. Some of them can be improved. You know, it's up to, it's up to us basically, or the developers who want to develop this. That's all. I just, I just, I just want to put it out there, you know, put a seed in your consciousness. Maybe you're going to think about it. Maybe you're going to like it. Maybe you're going to do it. It's going to happen anyways, no matter what. I guarantee it's going to happen. It's a matter of time. So that's it. Like, if you like this video, like it. If you like it, share it. If you have any questions, comment and subscribe. I'm starting out. Right now, I don't have a lot of subscribers and I don't have a lot of videos either. I'm just starting out. Help me out. I'm going to talk about a lot of good stuff in this channel. So, see you next time on Razor Frequency.